Well, hello, friend. Welcome to this special Church Marketing University Live. We're going to be talking about the Plan Your Visit system. And don't don't confuse it with just, oh, yeah, we have a Plan Your Visit button on our church's website. No, this is an entire framework designed to help people who are visiting your website to actually become in-person visitors. My special guest today is going to be Chris Abbott, who actually pioneered this system, I think, over six or seven years ago uh, for churches and has helped coach thousands of churches uh, through this framework. Uh, ever since. And so I'm super pumped to have him joining us live here in just a moment. Uh, also, just a big announcement. If you haven't heard, Chris and I have officially partnered together. We've created one company helping churches get more visitors every single week. And a part of what we're doing is a brand new program called Grow, which part of what we've got coming up is a Grow Plan Your Visit Bootcamp. Uh, so super pumped about that. You're going to hear some more information about that. This is really for churches that are designed to, they're ready to go to that next level and reaching a ton of people. Local missions is a priority. And uh, so if you're interested in, in hearing more about that, you can comment the word grow below and you will get you some more information on that. But in this live today, Chris is going to cover a couple situations. One, specifically for churches who may have a website, but your website isn't getting you new visitors every single week. Uh, we probably will identify why that is. Two, for churches that have a plan your visit button, but really, no one is using it. No one is showing up. Uh, that's a big red flag as well. And we'll be covering that. Or three, maybe you are having a couple people here and there plan their visit, but they're not showing up. We'll talk about why when you implement the entire system uh, that that solves that. And so we've got a great lineup today. Uh, also keep in mind, we are during this live opening up 10 spots to our grow program. So we've got 295 churches who's, who've jumped into this new program. We now have capacity to open up 10 more spots. So if you're here, if you're an early bird, you get the first shot at these spots. And, and so again, if you want information about where to get one of those spots, normally they sell out pretty quick. Uh, depending on how many spots we have, you can comment the word grow below. And then for our grow churches, we have our grow plan your visit boot camp coming up on June 21st and 22nd. Uh, we've got a great plan in place. Uh, Chris is actually going to walk you through the entire framework. And by the end of the boot camp, you will have the entire system set up and ready to go. And then what's cool is once you got that system set up, the CMU team is going to be running your Google grant. If you haven't heard of the Google grant, that's where Google gives you $10,000 of ad credit each month. We're going to be running those campaigns to your website that has your new system in place. And then we'll get you the traffic of people in your city. And then your website will, will We'll turn those uh, website visitors into in-person visitors. That's going to be coming up June 21st and 22nd. For those who are already in Grow or for the, the 10 lucky enough to get a spot, when you get uh, logged into your uh, dashboard, you can go to the boot camp section and this is where you can register and then you can also see the boot camp hub there. And then you can also see the lineup of all the other boot camps that we have coming up. Man, we just finished out our uh, prayer ads boot camp and then before that, the Easter ads boot camp. And so these things are so much fun. Uh, for those of you who have been at one of our boot camps recently, why don't you throw that in the comments? And in fact, for those joining us live, uh, you can say hello. Let us know what part of the world you're joining us from. Let us know where you're at with the Plan Your Visit system. Do you have it? Do you have part of it? Maybe where is yours uh, broken, broken or facing some obstacles? And then if you're uh, watching the on-demand webinar on YouTube, uh, you can look in the comments below. You can give us some feedback uh, and you can also get a link below as well if you're interested in grow and the the plan your visit boot camp so guys that's the lineup for today so super pumped about this uh, if you know anything about chris and i you know we try to talk really really fast uh, so we will be trying to cover a ton of ground but if you obviously we're not going to be able to help you implement every step along the way that's what the boot camp is for but we certainly can help you uh, answer some of the questions that you may have maybe your your system is stuck maybe it's not getting you as many visitors as you like so I think you're going to love the content that we have for you today. So, hey, say hello. I'm going to take a, a minute. Um, welcome everybody here in the comments. Again, let us know what part of the world that you're joining us from. Uh, if you do want information on the GROW program, you can comment like Margie has there, the word GROW, and uh, we'll get you that information right to your inbox. What's up? Uh, Dallas, Texas implemented a, a button a few months ago. New Jersey, hello. Uh, West Texas. Hey, a lot of a lot of Texas folks. So uh, keep telling us where you're at in the world. Uh, Sean, what's up, Sean? Um, 
and let us know where you're at. Uh, Sean's getting about two to three plan your visits per month. That is awesome. Uh, when we started running this at Summit Park, we, we I think in the first five years, we got about close to 600 uh, families planning their visit. So, uh, Dean, if you want to know the pricing to, to jump into Grow, uh, just comment the word Grow, which actually you did right there, and it'll give you all the information there. Right now, the pricing is ridiculously low. So we'll talk a little bit more about that later in the live, but it's $297 a month. Um, so for the church that's trying to grow, that's about $3,000 investment in local missions, or about the equivalent of sending out one direct mail piece, which I'm telling you, this program year round is going to be almost like sending out a direct mail piece every single day for your church. So that gives you kind of the equivalent. Uh, think about it in terms of local missions there. And then um, we are, the price is going to be going up. So not this time, we're gonna have one more open enrollment for Grow and then the price will be going up. It's kind of funny, I was talking to two uh, church leaders recently who serve tens of thousands of churches telling them about this new program Chris and I are working on. And, uh, and they were like, how much is it? And I was like, why don't you why don't you guess how much it is? And, and uh, the first guy was like, about a thousand dollars a month. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> that's we hear that a lot. Uh, in fact, what we do, most secular companies pay anywhere between a thousand and three thousand a month for this. I was like, no, you get grow, includes your Google grant management, your website, uh, your CMU enrollment, your daily social media uh, guide, your prayer ads. It's everything. It's the best of the best of what we have um, and, and what Chris has our combined companies into one program. So speaking of Chris, without further ado, I do want to bring on the special guest today. So if technology is working right, everybody say hello uh, to Chris Abbott. Chris, welcome, man. Super pumped to have you on the live. I feel like it's been a little bit since we've done one of these on uh, Facebook. Um, but man, Chris, hello. Welcome. What part of the world are you joining us from? And then tell us a little bit about when you started uh, with this whole plan your visit idea. Uh, man, yeah, yeah. So, uh, dude, uh, pumped to be on here. You're right. It's been a while since we've done a Facebook Live, so this is awesome. Um, man, so I'm, I'm in Tulsa, Oklahoma, specifically Broken Arrow, uh, which, uh, man, Ryan uh, is actually from Broken Arrow uh, here in Oklahoma. So, uh, man, grew up on the East Coast, but I've been living here for like 22 years now or something. So, um, man, super, super excited to kind of um, kind of dive into some of, the, some of this stuff today. I think one of the things that we can help with is a lot of those people that have either heard about Plan Your Visit and want to start doing it or have tried Plan Your Visit and it didn't work. Um, I think we can really help you here today, right? And then obviously those, those of you who are using Plan Your Visit and, uh, and, and it's working, but you want to know if you can go faster or kind of accelerate your results, we can actually show you how to, how to throw some gasoline on the bonfire. So uh, no matter where you're at here today, I, I think we're going to be able to uh, to help uh, get you unstuck or help you be able to go faster. Uh, when, when, so when, when I first started doing this, it was, uh, it was actually 2017 and I'd been running Facebook ads for churches for, for uh, a couple of years at that point. But what was interesting is it was hard to like measure how, like whether or not it was working. Like I remember like, like I was on um, my, my church uh, back in like 2016 contracted me to rebuild the website. Right. It's like one day we were just talking about pastor was like, Hey, what, what are we not doing that we should be doing? And I was like, well, Facebook ads, like it's, it's, it's incredible. Right. And he's like, okay, great. So he was like, I'm going to give you $500 a month. Right. And I remember I was like, okay, like, you know, like I, you should be giving me 5,000 a month right now if you do the power of Facebook ads, but I'll take 500 bucks a month. And I just made him promise me that if I could prove to him that it worked, that he would give me more money so we could reach more people. Right. So he's like, okay, yeah, great. The hard thing was like, so we started running Facebook ads and all of a sudden, like there's more people in the services. But as any of you guys know, who've ever run Facebook ads, like nobody shows up and they're like, oh my gosh, we saw your Facebook ad and we're here, right? I saw you on my phone and now I'm here, right? So, you know, it, 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 that's, that's not how it works. Sometimes it works that way with the direct mail piece, right? But the problem with direct mail, like my friend in, in, in Detroit found out, he had a, a, a church plan of 75 people. He went out and, and sent out a, um, a, a, a 16,000 piece mailer, right? Spent $9,000 on, on a mailer, 16,000 people, had two people show up, right? So he spent $9,000 on a mailer and had two people. He spent $4,500 per person, right? So like he literally could have gone out there and just paid 10 people 450 bucks a piece and 10X those results, right? That's the that's the problem with, with direct mail. Facebook ads are way more effective, but it was hard to hard to kind of uh, measure that. So um, when, when we figured out, uh, uh, plan your visit, right? Like I, I had this idea and basically the church wouldn't let me run with it for a long time. It wasn't my pastor. It was like my boss who was on staff. 
Uh, and she was like, no, we'd have to, we'd have to train all these people. And then I don't think anyone would ever sign up on a website and like schedule an appointment to visit the church. Right. Like that, that people, people here in, in Tulsa wouldn't do that. Right. Like every, everyone has their reason why, right. For us, it was like, oh, it, it's just over churched here. Right. You know, people grew up in church. And now if they go to, if they go to church, if they want to go to church, if they don't, they don't, they're not going to sign up on a website, and schedule an appointment. I was like, you know, I think they will. Right. So literally for nine months, I sat on the idea. And then finally for Easter 2017, I decided to run it anyway. And I just wasn't going to tell anyone. Right. That whole like, you know, ask for uh, forgiveness instead of permission. Right. Like I just went in. I built out a plan your visit landing page. I created a bunch of Facebook ads for Easter and said, hey, plan your visit. Um, and, 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 and it was it was crazy. I mean, Ryan, you've heard me tell the story probably a million times at this point. But literally, we got there. And uh, we, <laughs> we we ended up having to take plan your visit off the website because we ran out of hosts, right? So like we were we were on 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 pay stuff well over 100, maybe even 200 plan your visits for for this Easter Sunday, and uh, and it was crazy. Like we showed up and we ended up having the largest uh, service in the history of our church, right? 27 years. This was the largest service we'd ever had in the history of the church because of plan your visit and things just kind of exploded, right? So we maxed out our main sanctuary, we maxed out our overflow sanctuary, and then we got word that our kids ministry, like the building was literally three times over the legal limit of what the fire marshal would allow us to have in the building. Like kids like spilling out of the building. We had somebody there, so we had to shut down our kids check-in. So this long line of all these young families, right? We, we all worked so hard to get like new families, these young families, elementary school age kids, get them in the door. They're all standing in line trying to check in their kids. It literally, the line went through the lobby, down the hallway and out into the parking lot. I'm not joking, right? And we had to shut that down and say, hey, we're so sorry. We don't have room for you in our main sanctuary. We don't have room for you in our overflow sanctuary. And we can't check your kids into our kids' church because we're violating uh, the fire marshal, uh, <laughs> our, our fire policies. We have too many kids in the building. Um, so we had about a thousand people who were stuck outside of the church, couldn't get a seat in any of our services and couldn't check their kids into kids' church on Easter of 2017. And at that point we thought, man, maybe there's something to this whole plan your visit thing. So um, you know, short, short versions, we basically continue to run Facebook ads, uh, right. And, and continue to have plan your visits and we ended up growing our church. So that was in, uh, in April, uh, in May, we grew our church, increased our first time visitors by 42%, uh, in June by 60% in July by 87%. And then in August by 113%. Right. So at that point we kind of, we actually started a, a church network, started teaching this to churches all over the country. Uh, and the rest is history. Things took off, kind of exploded. And, uh, and then other churches started seeing some of the results. And uh, so that's one of the things we've been, been helping with churches here ever since 2017 is helping them get results, grow their church and attract new families using Plan Your Visit. Man, such a cool story. I love that thing. We, we had something similar at, at the time that you were doing that, Chris. I was kind of pioneering uh, kids pre-registration. And, uh, yeah. you know, I was trying to convince churches do that. You were trying to convince churches, uh, plan your visit. Uh, I eventually just conceded and said, Chris's idea is better. Just include kids pre-registration in plan your visit. And so uh, Chris won that one and was was smarter than my, myself on that. But um, so today, Chris, uh, we're going to be talking through the framework because a lot of churches have tried something in this, but not a lot of churches are seeing that level of results. And I think a lot of what you and I see is like, oh, they're, they're trying to put a button on their website. Website, they don't understand the entire system. And so that's what we're going to get into today. But Chris, one of the um, one of the cool aspects about Plan Your Visit is what it does on the connections and assimilation side for a church. So mm -hmm. will you really let's begin this conversation with that end in mind? Because I think a lot of people don't realize that's really the goal. That's really the, the point of this. And so walk us through kind of starting with the end in mind, and then we can back into the framework that you, we use to actually achieve <clears throat> this, this type of result that you're going to talk to us about. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I love talking about this stuff, man. I think um, I, I think a lot of times, right, we, we start looking at the beginning, what we need to do to get new people in. But the best way to do this is to reverse engineer, it, begin with the end in mind, and then reverse engineer the result that we're actually looking for. And so the, the whole reason for anyone that's, uh, that's ever like maybe on the fence about uh, learning Plan Your Visit or thinking about starting Plan Your Visit, the whole reason to do this is assimilation and discipleship. Right. So so like if you're like, oh, man, why should my church start doing plan your visit? Like, I'm not sure if it would work here. Right. The, the reason is assimilation. Right. So when when we first started doing this, um, right, we'd, on average, it would take people about three to six months before they went through our next steps class and join the church. 
right? So our next steps class, kind of like our growth track, right, is, is how they would they'd go to that next steps class. Uh, they'd officially, you know, join the church and then they would get plugged into like a volunteer team from there. Uh, right. So uh, it took us about three to six months to do that. But what we found was once we started doing plan your visit, 80 percent of the people who went through plan your visit joined our church within three weeks. Right. So so, you know, we, we went from three to six months uh, all the way down to three weeks and it was eight out of 10 people. Right. So I don't know how many people we had joining the church before that, but it was way less than 80 percent. All right. And, and, and it was just it was pretty crazy. And so we realized, oh, my gosh. This is the best way to get people not only like to the church and to visit, but this is the best way to get them assimilated, to get them to join the church and then get plugged in. Right? I mean, we, we literally had a, had a girl one time who came to plan your visit. Right? She was uh, I think she was like 22. She came out and she was like she was so blown away. My friend Katie was was her plan your visit host. She was so blown away and swept off her feet by this. Right. Just that, that somebody met at the front door that Katie, you know, got her a free drink from the coffee bar and, and showed her around the church and saved seats with her in service and sat with her in service. You're right. Introduced her around to, you know, some cool people. And, and like after she was like, hey, like I've been visiting churches and checking around like I don't need to check any place out anymore. This is my church. I want to be here and I want to do what you do. And so literally like that day, she went to Next Steps and joined the church. Right. Very first day she came. And the next Sunday, she was plugged in. She was on the Plan Your Visit team, and she was hosting a Plan Your Visit family, right? Like, that's the power of Plan Your Visit. It's because, right, if she hadn't planned a visit, she would have just come out and just kind of like, you know, probably would have got high-fived by some of the greeters, right? Somebody would have given her some warm smile, right? Somebody may have even, like, said hi to her on the way into the sanctuary, but she wouldn't have got connected. But Plan Your Visit gets people connected, which speeds up the assimilation process. So that's what we want is we ultimately want people to join the church. We want them to be uh, members of the church and we want them to be plugged into our systems and discipleship process. I love that. And I think when my lead pastor heard that, he's like, oh, like he wasn't even thinking in terms of because for most lead pastors that we talk to, that's their heart. They want to see people connected. They want to see people, uh, you know, being discipled and, and really uh, frequently attending and being a part of the, the family. And so when we connected the dots and when we do that for lead pastors, they're like, oh, I thought this was just like a marketing thing. Once they see it as a connections thing and a discipleship uh, thing, it's like, oh my gosh, that just opens their mind. Like, okay, I can see that. And that's why, Chris, what we're about to talk to us about is so important because that does not happen just by putting a button on your website. That doesn't happen by just putting a form on your website. Like that's an okay first step. My guess is for a lot of churches, they're like, I, we have that, no one's using it. We'll explain why here in a second. But the, you have to have the entire framework for it to work. So I love that story that you tell. And really what you can see is when somebody is hosted well and when the, the framework is implemented and there's this level of thoughtfulness, people are introduced. So now part of Plan Your Visit is helping them connect and make friends, meet the pastor, right? There's so much more that you can just step back and see like, well, duh, no wonder they're get, getting connected so fast is because there's an intentional pathway for them to get connected. Like this makes so much sense. But again, a lot of people have kind of heard somebody, either you or somebody talk about it and they just thought, oh, I just got to put that button on my website, which that's that's really not, not it at all. So in this next section, let's go through the framework of the Plan Your Visit system. So this is the entire system. This is how you move beyond just the button to a system that re really is going to help you connect with people. Uh, again, in the, in the comments, when you're jumping in, please let us know what church you're a part of and then maybe how far of this framework you've implemented. Have you done any of it? Do you have a button? <laughs> is it working? Do you have, as Chris talks through the steps, would you just say, oh, we've never we've never done that we haven't got that far or yeah we've done that and uh kind of track along with him in the comments here but chris walk us through the steps of the framework yeah yeah so <clears throat> this is this is a four-part framework and then there's a couple different key pieces inside uh, of the four steps right so uh, the four steps gonna look like this the first thing you're gonna do is uh you're gonna run a targeted facebook ad okay the second thing that you're gonna do is uh man you're gonna have a plan your visit landing page Okay. The fourth part is uh, is is plan your visit itself. Uh, excuse me. So it's going to go Facebook ad to a landing page where people can uh, where people can plan a visit, right? And then you're going to plug them into a follow up system. Okay. So those are those are the four pieces: Facebook ad, landing page, plan your visit, follow up system. 
right? Because, uh, and, and, and this is the follow systems, the part that a lot of people forget, right? Because the only thing better than a first time visitor is a second time visitor, right? So once we get them in the door, we actually have to get them to come back again, just because they came one time doesn't mean uh, that, that they're going to join the church and come every single week. And so we have to have an extended follow-up system. Um, I like having at least a 12 week follow-up system that we can plug people into, right? So Facebook ad landing page, plan your visit, follow-up system. And then um, there's, there's a couple of pieces inside of there. You want me to dive into, into that, Ryan, or do you want to, uh, just, just talk about the high level for a second. So l let me help kind of play a uh, guide here. So I'm going to guide the conversation. So those are the four big categories. And then each category has some key components in each category. So Chris, I'm going to help guide us through those four categories okay. and then kind of what are the ingredients in each category. We don't have time to jump in um, all of this today. That's what we're going to be doing at our Grow uh, Plan Your Visit boot camp coming up here June 21st, 22nd. Again, you can comment the word Grow if you want some information on that. Um, but let's take the first category, Chris. A, a targeted Facebook ad. For those who are with us at the Easter uh, Facebook ads bootcamp, this is exactly what we did. Uh, so if you were at that bootcamp, give us a shout out, let us know how that worked. But just walk us through real quick uh, in like 60 seconds, uh, what's involved with that? Because really that could be its own Facebook Live and YouTube webinar uh, at, at that point. Yeah, did you say uh, walk through the, the Facebook ad part? Yep, yep, okay. let's go through that, that first step. Yeah, perfect. So, so that first step, the, the Facebook ad uh, is is pretty simple, but this is where a lot of people miss it just from the beginning, right? So, when you're running a Facebook ad, you have to create a a Facebook ad uh, that is you only want to use geo targeting, uh, which means you basically want to drop a pin on your church, and then you want to extend it out to whatever driving distance is for your church. For most churches, that's probably ten or fifteen miles. Uh, right now, if you live in like you know New York City or uh, LA or Las Vegas or something like that, right? And you're right in the middle of downtown, that might be like one to five miles. But for most churches, it's 10 to 15. Uh, for some of the rural churches, it might actually be 30 to 45. But you wanna, you just wanna drop a pin on your, uh, on your, uh, excuse me, on your uh, location and then draw out a, uh, a radius that is within driving distance of your church. And then you wanna create a walking selfie video. Right, so there's a whole bunch of nuances in this. We actually did uh, like a selfie school in one of our, uh, our recent Grow Boot Camps, which is pretty cool. Literally just showing people kind of the nuances of a walking selfie video and how that works. Right, but a selfie video, you want to shoot it vertically uh, instead of horizontally on an iPhone. It's just uh, vertically. It's been proven to be five times more effective. Right, that's Facebook's uh, stats. Five times more effective than a horizontal video, and they actually uh, get watched twice as long. Right. And so and if you're doing a walking selfie video, it'll be even longer. So just creating that walking selfie video uh, as a Facebook ad, not a boosted post, but as a Facebook ad and then sending out to everybody within driving distance of the church between the ages of 18 and 65 plus and leaving the uh, leaving the targeting completely wide open. Right. So that's kind of the it's the 60 second version. I love it. And uh, I know we get a lot of questions in our church marketers group, which, by the way, if you're not in that group, that's a great place to ask some more detailed questions. I saw uh, one person just kind of asking about detailed targeting with their Facebook ads, because I know Facebook's actually removing a lot of that. And so the good news about Chris's strategy is like you don't need any of it for the work. In fact, it works better if you don't do any of that uh, detailed targeting. So you're going to run this Facebook ad. You're going to run it to a landing page. I do think this becomes now territory where a lot of churches we see uh, are doing uh, plan your visit wrong. Meaning they think I need a button on like my homepage or something. Chris, when I hear you coach through a lot of churches, uh, and I've I've had the pleasure of hearing coaches uh, or Chris coach a lot of CMU churches through this system, and and they're like, man, we've had this button, we've been trying it for a year, and nobody's doing this. He's like, okay, yeah, pull up your website, and they're like, yeah, well, here's the homepage, and we have this. But he's like, oh yeah, you're 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 doing it wrong, and he he like within like thirty seconds, he's like fixes it. He's like, no. It, what you really need is a landing page that's all about uh, planning your visit. And so, Chris, walk us through that. Walk us through why this is such a big deal. Uh, I know we have some examples. We're going to be building these landing pages for our grow churches uh, at the boot camp. But just give us the 60-second version of the landing page speech. Yeah, so the, the landing page is probably the most important part. Uh, of the whole thing, right? Like it's it's it, if if you don't have a landing page uh, that converts, it it won't work. No matter how awesome your Facebook ad is, no matter how many people go to this go to this page. So the interesting thing is that um, a, a lot of times what people hear is they they hear me talk about that. They say, okay, great, I need a landing page. So they go create 
a landing page. Now, just because you have a landing page doesn't mean it'll actually convert or that it'll actually work or people will actually plan your visit, right? So even if you go plan, even if you go create a landing page and send a bunch of people uh, to it with a Facebook ad, right? If it doesn't work, it's not because Facebook ads don't work in your area or people in your city are hard ground and you know they're they're not going to plan a visit. That's not it. The problem is you just didn't build the landing page right, right? So the, there's there's some some conversion psychology that actually goes into an effective landing page that converts, right? And so that's what we build into a plan your visit landing page, right? And so specifically, it has to it has to speak to one person, right? You can only say one thing. So there's a, a copywriting principle that says if you say more than one thing, you say nothing at all. Right. So you can't be like a church for everyone. Right. You, you want to stay away from language like, hey, we have something for everyone or hey, we've got something for the whole family. That's not true. And people know it. Right. There's no such thing as one size fits all in 2022. There's just not in anything, in any industry, in anything. There's no article of clothing. There's there's no specific Facebook principle. There's no landing page. Right. Uh, there, there's no church that's one size fits all. People know that. So you have to write in a, in a very uh, in, in, in a certain style in a way that's going to create an emotional connection with people, right? So that they're going to want to take the next step and actually sign up for uh, plan your visit. There's some different questions you have to ask on there. Like Ryan, you and I have talked about this before, but the the, the two questions that every single potential visitor has uh, before they visit a church is who's the pastor and who are the people, right? So your your uh, your landing page has to answer those questions. Right. And then you have to kind of speak through people to the to the purpose that's on the inside of them. And, and you have to you have to use a couple of different types of, uh, you know, copywriting strategies in order to make sure that you're making an emotional connection with people. But as long as you do that and you create a landing page that only says one thing, right, one single call to action. And that call to action is plan your visit. Uh, and you're speaking through people to the purpose inside of them and, uh, and you're actually making an emotional connection with people, then your landing page is going to convert and you're going to have a lot of new families who start signing up for plan your visit and showing up on Sunday. Let me uh, give you guys two additional thoughts for those of you. And I know when you're watching a live, the tendency is like, okay, well, show me what is that exact step. And again, we can get you there. If you're a CMU church, we're happy to help you in our weekly coaching call for grow churches. Get registered for that plan your visit boot camp. We literally have a template with one click of a button. Chris's uh, new here page, landing page. A lot of comments uh, in the chat right now about, okay, is that different than a new here page? Is that different than a how to participate page? And we'll show you the exact steps, right? So we can walk through this, but we don't have time to get into the weeds. Uh, so we do have resources for CMU churches, the weekly coaching call, uh, Omega churches. We've got a one click install for our grow churches. We're actually going to show you how to do that at the boot camp, and you will have. Chris's plan your visit landing page ready to go for your church uh, as soon as the boot camp is done and you'll be ready to rock. Now, I do want to point out uh, we do have a we so if you were with us at the last church marketing conference, we launched a church. It's not a real church, so to speak, but for one weekend, it was a real church. It's called Belief Church, beliefchurch.com. You can see in our example, this is about to get an update as well uh, from, from Chris and the team, but you can see our example of a plan your visit landing page and kind of the elements that he has, has here. I don't want you to get too stuck in the weeds there. Uh, I want you to be able to pay attention to the entire framework. And then if you're like, man, we want to do this, don't try to do it alone. I mean, we can, we can, We've got a course that can help you with that, but ideally jump into grow, go through the boot camp, and get a system that works. the su The summer is a perfect time uh, to to get that system in place, uh, and and we've got some tools that can help you with that. Um, so on that too, one of the things I, I want to point out, and this is maybe one of the biggest aha moments uh, for churches when it comes to plan your visit. And they don't realize this, and this is kind of a good news bad news situation. Um, so the, the, the bad news is, Chris, would you tell churches, if, if you want to get a, a family to plan their visit, how many, how many people, how many website visitors do you need to send to a plan your visit landing page? Now, don't get, for those watching and, and participating here, don't get too frustrated because I'll share the good news as well. But Chris, give us the, about the average because I don't think a lot of churches understand this. Yeah, yeah. So, so on average, it takes uh, 200 to 300 clicks to your uh, to your landing page in order to get uh, one plan your visit family. 
So 200 to 300. So I know for a lot of small churches, you're like, oh no, that's why nobody's planning their visit is because we get like 300 website visitors in a year and we get about one planner visit in a year. So that makes sense. And so that's kind of the bad news is like, uh, and this isn't something that's unique to churches, right? Any place that has a plan, plan your visit, uh, Disney World, the local zoo, the local aquarium. I mean, it's, it's all over the place now. It, really, you're, you're talking about, you know, playing a numbers game at some point where you're driving a lot of traffic. And then out of that traffic, you've got X of percentage of people will actually take that next step. So the good news is what we specialize in CMU is we're obsessed with getting your church more visitors and that means website visitors and that means in-person visitors and so there are some very uh, practical ways where you can really increase the level of traffic uh, to your church's website so if you need 300 visitors to get a plan your visit that's not the end of the world you just have to know how are we going to get that many people from our local area on our website and that's part of what we do in CMU. That's part of what we do in the in the Grow program. We can do that using Google's money through Google Grant process. Google will give you ten thousand dollars a month, and CMU will run that traffic to your website, right? So that's part of what we want to do at the boot camp is get your the system set up. So it's kind of like a, a math equation. The boot camp get your plan your visit system in place. We get you the Google grant. So Google will say, hey, here's $10,000 every single month that you can run ads to uh, your website. The CMU team will set up those campaigns, will drive traffic to your website. Now your website is equipped with an effective plan your visit system. And that's how you reach more people and you grow every single month. Okay, so that's the, if there was a, formula here, that's what it is. It's not always that simple. You guys know that pastoring and leading churches, but that's kind of kind of wrap your mind there. That's what we're trying to do. So it, don't let that, that kind of bad news um, really overwhelm you. You just have to know how are we gonna drive traffic? Facebook ads, Google ads, search engine optimization. Uh, there's all sorts of different ways that we can get you that uh, traffic, but a lot of churches don't realize that. Uh, you may have the, the plan your visit button, but if nobody's uh, seeing it or you're not getting enough people to see it you're never going to get the volume of visitors that that you would want so Chris that's the two first parts of the system we're halfway there guys uh, if you have questions of these let's put them in the in the chat below and uh, we'll try to answer questions at the end again if you're interested in our upcoming boot camp in our grow program if you want the CMU team to be running your ads basically taking Google's money and getting you website visitors uh, we're very 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 good at that uh, you can comment the word grow below and we will message you inside your Facebook messenger uh, inbox how you can get some more information on that so Chris the next Next part of this is the plan your visit uh, system here. So again, uh, we're, we're now on step three and we're just now really getting into the steps of the plan your visit system. Will you walk us through the system? And I noticed when you were talking about um, your church, it wasn't just a button. You were talking about there was a host. I, I heard you say the word host a lot. I heard you say introduce the pastor. I heard you say sit with them, save you seat, show you around. I heard you say connect and introduce you to people. So like, is this, are all of those things a part of this step? And if so, just kind of walk us through what's all included in this yeah. step. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, th you know, this is this is one of the, uh, the 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 parts I get really really excited about uh, because this is something we just we tested and tried, uh, and, and it took us several years to really kind of get this locked in. Uh, but what we what we found now, what we've been teaching for the last couple of years, uh, has, has worked really really well at our church, and then you know, kind of hundreds of churches uh, around the world that we've kind of coached and, and and helped with this. And and basically, it's it's the idea of this, right? So. The same way that Disney World has where you can like plan your visit, right? You go in there and fast pass, you kind of, you know, choose exactly what you're going to do, what rides you're going to go to the front of the line on and, and plan out your whole thing. That's the whole idea of, of plan your visit. Basically, what we're doing is we're lowering the barrier of entry for someone to visit our church for the very first time. And the reason that's important is because there's a lot of people out there, right, who are not extroverts, who are, are like super nervous about visiting a church for the first time. And here's the deal, like, I don't know about you guys, like I got saved when I was 13. I've pretty much been in church every single Sunday since, right? Like there was, there was some times uh, like where, uh, where, where I started partying in high school for a little while where I missed a couple of months of church. That's about it, right? So uh, from, from the time I was 13 years old, I've pretty much been in church every single week. The, like we forget at just how um, intimidating it can be visiting a church for the very first time, 
right? Like I love meeting new people. Like I'm pretty much an extrovert. I like walking into a church and meeting new people and all that kind of stuff. So for me, like that's no big deal, right? But but for people who are a lot more introverted, who don't feel great in crowds and that kind of stuff, but want to visit a church, imagine how intimidating it can be for someone to show up the very first time they're gonna they're gonna come to a church they've never been to right they got to figure out where to go in the doors what it looks like on the inside they don't know what it looks like they don't know what the people are like are these people gonna be you know are, are, are they gonna judge me right like, like you know maybe uh maybe that person shows up they're a little bit hungover from the night before right like are they gonna get judged for that maybe they have tattoos and they've had some some bad experiences with that before i've talked to so many people that that's happened to where they weren't welcome at certain churches because they had tattoos, right? All these different things are going on in their mind. And so plan your visit is a way to kind of lower the barrier of entry uh, by that. And so what, what we do is we have someone sign up for plan your visit. We're going to collect uh, at least their name and phone number so that we can, we can reach out to them within 15 minutes of planning the visit. Right, because they're a little bit nervous. They just they just took this huge step. They gave you their their name and phone number, and they scheduled an appointment to visit church. Now we need somebody from the church to reach out to them and have a conversation um, about uh, what what to do on Sunday morning. Right, and so we actually we have some scripts for this uh, inside of CMU. So CMU churches, if you guys need help with some of this stuff, like hey, what do I do when I call them? Uh, right, within 15 minutes, we have scripts for that. Uh, right. You also we, we found that um, connecting with them uh, really, really helped our show up rate on Sunday morning. But we also found uh, right when we first started doing this, we only had about half of the, the planner visits were showing up on Sunday. Right. So Katie was actually reaching out, calling them, having a conversation. We're still only getting about 50 percent of those planner visits to actually show up on Sunday. And so what we started doing is Katie just started sending out a text message to all the planner visits on Saturday night. Right. So like 6 p.m., 7 p.m., she would just send out a text message like, hey, John, this is Katie. Just want to let you know I'm really excited about meeting you uh, tomorrow, uh, you know, uh, for, for playing your visit. Can't wait to, um, uh, you know, to, to buy a cup of coffee. Right. And so like all of a sudden, like our, our, our show up race just started shooting through the roof. And I think it was because of two reasons. One, everyone likes a reminder. Right. Reminders help. But number two, just knowing that there is a person who's going to be waiting for them the next day lowers the barrier of entry, right? It, it, all the all the doubts that could creep in and that kind of stuff. It's like, oh, okay, yeah, no, like, there's going to be somebody waiting for me at the front door, right? So that's what we do is we, we have a host that's going to be waiting for them at the front door. And so if we have five different plan your visit families, we have five different hosts. One of the things that, that we like to do at my church, and this isn't always possible, but if possible, we look on Facebook, see if we can find them, uh, right? And we just kind of look to see what season of life they're in, right? So if it looks like it's a college kid, we try to find somebody else on our plan your visit team who's a college kid to host that person all right just so they're kind of you know similar seasons of life if possible right if it's an empty nester we look you know we grab somebody from the church who's a friendly empty nester and have them host them again this isn't always possible but if we can that's that's what we like to do all right and that host just meets them at the front door helps them get their kids checked into kids church uh, gives them a tour of the building if they would like one right shows them where the bathrooms are shows them where the coffee is gets them a free cup of coffee um, one of the things that, that we started doing that was really helpful is we started uh, giving out like, you know, free coffee to visitors and we started putting it in red cups. Right. And so that way, you knew if you saw somebody walking around with a red cup, you knew they were a first time visitor. Right. So maybe they were part of planning your visit. Maybe they weren't. But now this is an easy way to identify people who are uh, who are first time visitors because they're walking around the lobby and the sanctuary with red cups. So all of our staff and volunteers can make sure to single them out, uh, introduce themselves. Right. And, and be friendly. Um, and then uh, part of the planner visit is uh, is after showing them around, we would also uh, we would save seats for them in service, and then we would uh, we would actually have our planner visit hosts sit with them in service as well, right? Because the tendency is like, okay, I've, you know, hey, let me show you your seat. I already saved you a seat, right? And then kind of drop them off, and then kind of go about your business, and then try to find them after service, right? But especially you know if, if you're coming by yourself, now you have to sit there like feeling like a loser who's sitting by themselves at church, right? It's it's that same feeling as like. I call it like cafeteria syndrome, right? Like in high school, when you like walked in on the first day of school and you like looked around for all your friends, you didn't see anybody and you panicked. And then like you sit at a table all by yourself and now you feel like that loser who's sitting at lunch by themselves. You're like, ah, oh, dang it. Like I didn't see any of my friends. I don't have any of my people, right? And you're like self-conscious the whole time. Same thing happens at church, right? So have a plan your visit host, uh, sit with them. And then afterwards, uh, one of the best things you can do is make sure to uh, introduce them to the senior pastor. Right. There's a, a statistic out there. I think I heard this from Tom Rainer, I think. Uh, but eight out of 10 people who meet the pastor on the first visit will come back for a second visit. Right. So even if you mess everything else up, 
right? And, but you make sure uh, that all of your first time visitors have a chance to meet the pastor. Eight out of 10 of them will come back for a second visit. Right. And so uh, that's that's kind of our, our way of, of getting them getting them plugged in is, you know, you want to call them within 15 minutes. You want to send a Saturday night reminder. You want to have a host waiting for them at the front door when they show up. Right. Uh, help them get their kids checked into kids church. Give them a tour of the building. Introduce them to some key staff and leaders. Right. To so introduce them to the cool people. Right. Kind of shield them from some of the weird people. Right. Make sure you save seats with them in service. Make sure you sit with them. And then afterwards, make sure they have a chance to meet the pastor right? Because uh, eight out of 10 of them will come back for a second visit just for meeting the pastor, right? So again, if you guys have like coffee and that kind of stuff, you can get them free coffee and donuts, whatever you guys do at your church. But all, all we're looking to do ultimately is we don't want to treat them like VIPs. Again, this is one of the biggest mistakes that churches make. We don't want to treat them like rock stars or movie stars and roll out the red carpet. It's not VIP, it's family, Okay, so we're not treating them like 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 VIPs when they first roll up. We're treating them like family. So if your best friend or your brother or your sister or your cousin or your favorite uncle, right? If you've been praying from for them for years and they finally showed up to church on Sunday, how would you treat them? Right? Like like I like I know if my best friend showed up, I'd, like I'd be out there, man. I'd be high fiving them in the parking lot, opening the door for them. Come on in, man. Help them get their their kids checked into kids church. Right? Buying them like some free coffee. I'd be treating them like that, that's that's family. That's how you want to treat people. So it's not VIP, it's family. Such good stuff. And I know I know that's a lot. And we're trying to give you guys as much as we can. If you're like me, I hate signing up, going to like a webinar and like, oh, they didn't tell me anything. So I know this could be a little bit like, oh my gosh, that's a, that's a lot. And, and I think that is intentional. I think we want pastors and church leaders to hear like, that's why this, what Chris is describing, this framework is so much different than just, yeah, we have a button on our website. Okay, that's a good first step, but it's like one step out of the next uh, 12 that you need to take. And that's why I love when Chris describes it, it's like, this is a no brainer why those people, if they're treated like that, if, they're, if that level of thoughtfulness, hospitality, intentionality, connection, introducing them. I love how, uh, I think it was Jeremy said, you know, like shielding them is an undervalued skill. <laughs> you know, like that level of, of hospitality, it's no wonder why those people fall in love with a local church and are like, hey, count me in. And not only count me in, but I wanna do, I love your story, Chris, where like, I wanna do what you do. Like what somebody did for me, I wanna be that for somebody else. And so, um, these these hosts are, are super valuable. So thank you so much, Chris, for explaining all those steps. Again, for those who are like, man, this sounds awesome, but like I need I need some time, I need some brain space to like work on all of this. Uh, the summer is a perfect time, and we do have the boot camp coming up. You can comment the word grow. This is going to be a part of our grow program. This is what the hub looks like. So for our grow churches, you need to go to the boot camp section of the dashboard in RSVP. Uh, this is what we're going to go through, and this is the course that we're going through uh, to. So all of this, we've got all the materials done for you. We've got the landing pages. We've got the, the follow-up system. We've got the, the easy button installs with uh, the text reminders, the emails that you send them. All of that is ready to go. We'll make it super simple so that when you're uh, finished with the boot camp, your entire system is ready to go. So we've got a great uh, plan in place for you. There are some churches, if you're in Church Marketing University, so if your church is enrolled in CMU, but you're not in the grow program yet. Hey, that's okay. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take this course after the boot camp. You will get access to the course to go through it on demand. We also have one of the version of this course in the legacy library that you can go through right now. Uh, so don't sweat it, but this will be the groundwork for our brand new course now that we've partnered together officially with Chris Abbott. So for UCMU churches, you can plan on about August uh, getting access to this new course for our grow churches be at the boot camp, and we're going through this uh, course live together and and setting it all up uh, together. Now, I also know, like again, if somebody was asking about the Grow uh, program, you can comment the word Grow below. Somebody was asking about pricing, and I do wanna be crystal clear, Grow is a big investment, and Grow is, if your church is in a tough financial season, uh, Grow is not for you. So if you're having kind of budget concerns, if you're like, man, I don't know, like, don't worry about Grow right now. Let's get you into CMU. Uh, we do have scholarships available if you go to churchmarketinguniversity.com slash scholarship. 
you can get in there. You can go through the on-demand course, but we don't want churches that are in budget crunches in Grow. Uh, Grow is specifically designed for churches that have a great foundation in place. You've got some budget uh, margin and breathing room. Uh, you would say, Ryan, we, we're ready to set aside about 3% of our overall church budget towards local missions. We see that as a defining characteristic of growing churches. And you're like, hey, we've got margin. We've got a priority of local missions. Uh, we want to be reaching more and more people uh, Budget, yeah. I mean, no, no church is just like swimming in it. But hey, we've got we've got this set aside. You're going to be a perfect candidate for grow. And you're like, man, we're ready to go to that next level. We want to see uh, two, three, four, five visiting families every single week. Um, you're going to love grow because not only do you need the system in place, you need Chris's system, but you need the next step. It's like, okay, we've got an amazing system in place. We've got it on our website. We've got follow up in place. We've got hosts standing by. But how in the world are we going to get two to 300 website visitors now every single week so we get plan your visits rolling in? That's we, We're going to tackle both those equa equations in, in Grow. We, we're going to work on getting you visitors. You're going to work on implementing the system. That's what the Grow program is. So just very clearly, if your church has budget margin, you're at a place where you're already setting aside 3% or more of your overall budget towards local missions and, and you're ready to grow that's grow. If you're like, man, we're just a startup. Uh, we're, we're in a little bit of a tough season. That's our scholarship program. Okay. Does that make sense? So if you want grow, say grow. If you want scholarship, you might be able to say scholarship. We could see if that, that, uh, if the bot is smart enough to get you there. Uh, if not go to churchmarketinguniversity.com slash scholarship and, and we'll get you hooked up there. So we want to do whatever we can to help local churches for sure. Our team is obsessed with getting churches more visitors. The Grow program, though, is, is more intense. It's going to include your website, which we've got a lot of hard costs there. It's going to include your, your Google grant management, which we're paying highly capable team members there. So it's not it, it has a lot of built-in costs, and we just can't uh, lower it below what we're already offering churches. So just to be super clear on that. So, uh, Chris, I want to bring you back in because we are through uh, three steps of the Plan Your Visit system. The fourth step is now the follow-up system. So a lot of churches, they're like, we're just getting started. This is super helpful. Thank you for telling us about the framework. Some churches are like, hey, we have a button, but nobody's using it. So you've walked us through, well, you got to get traffic and you don't just need a button. You need a landing page. And then people are like, well, okay, we've got a landing page now. We've got a button as well. Um, but really people aren't really loving it or getting connected. We're not seeing the simulation. You're like, no, you need the whole plan your visit framework. So that was step three. And, and then now it's like, okay, we've got all of those three steps, but we're finding people aren't coming back. Like we're hosting them, uh, but but they're not coming back. So the fourth part of the framework is your follow-up system. I, I, I heard you mention uh, an eight to 12 week follow-up system. I think a lot of people are like, what? <laughs> like we just email people or we give them a mug and we wave in the parking lot. That's our follow-up system. So real quick, real quick, Chris, give us a uh, 60 second overview of the follow-up system you recommend and why in the world is it eight to 12 weeks? That sounds crazy. Yeah, so, uh, you know, one, one, of the, one of the main reasons, right, is just because human nature, like pre-pandemic, the average Christian uh, in the US goes to church 1.2 times per month, right? So, so before the pandemic and everything that happened, right, is the average person in the US, who, the average churchgoer only goes to church 1.2 times per month. Uh, but the average Starbucks drinker goes to Starbucks six times per month. Okay. So like literally like Starbucks is beating the church by six to one. Okay. So um, right, for that reason, since, since the average person is only going to church 1.2 times per month, I mean, we have to follow up with them for at least 12 weeks, uh, right? In, in order to get them back in the door. Because even the, even the average person, if you hit them up the first week, it might take them three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine weeks before they come back again. And so like if you send them like a mug and a letter from the pastor the first week and then never say anything to them again, you've missed out on an opportunity to get them back to church. Not because they didn't have a great time, not because they don't want to come back to church, right? That's just, that's just kind of you know the law of averages right now. So if we know that, we have to have an extended follow-up system. And we have to continue to invite people back to church for at least 12 weeks. So one, you know, one of the things that, that we've seen that can help speed up the process is uh, doing something that we call a Monday morning selfie video, right? So this is, uh, I, I love this. It's really, really powerful uh, because what it does is it makes a personal connection with people. 
And it's just another touch, right? 24 hours after they came to visit for the first time. And the way this works, it's best if it comes from the senior pastor, but um, if, if your pastor doesn't want to do this, or if you have like a large church, you need to, uh, you need some help doing this. All you need to do is you basically just take all the connect cards, right? From all of your visitors the day before, excuse me. So that's going to include all of your plan, your visit, plus just all of your normal visitors that came in. And so if you had 10 visitors, you're going to take those, those 10 connect cards, you're going to look at it and you're going to see, okay, it looks like uh, John and Sarah, uh, right? They came here and uh, their daughter, Zoe, uh, looks like they, they came yesterday. So you're going to pull out your phone and you're just going to say like, hey, John and Sarah Smith, what's going on, Pastor Chris here? Hey, I just want to thank you so much for coming to church yesterday. Man, I hope that you had a great time. Uh, man, I, I know we had a great time uh, hosting you. Uh, I know Katie uh, said uh, you know some, some amazing things about how much fun she had kind of getting to know you guys. Uh, I hope Zoe had an incredible time back in our kids ministry. Uh, I know we gave her a bunch of Bible bucks so that she can buy some candy and a bunch of stuff when she comes back from the kids store next week. But uh, man, I just want to thank you for coming and let you know, man, it means the world to us. Uh, man, and, and I want to invite you back. I mean, we're doing it again next Sunday, same time, same place, 10 o'clock. Can you make it? End of video, right? So if you, if you create a Monday morning selfie video like that, right? And then you go text that to John, the first thing John's going to do is he's going to watch it and be like, oh my gosh, I can't believe Pastor Chris actually took time to make this like selfie video for me. Then he's going to go show it to his wife. So he's going to watch it again when his wife sees it, uh, right? And then here's here's a, a, a little hidden nugget. If you say something like uh, in the middle of like, hey, I know Zoe had a great time, uh, you know, at our uh, at, uh, back in the, in the kids' building. I tell you what, don't tell anyone, Zoe, this is for you. Don't tell your parents this. But if you come back this Sunday, uh, man, I'm actually going to give you uh, a, an entire bag of free candy and another 200 Bible bucks to spend in the kids store. Okay, don't tell your parents, but that's what I'm going to do. Well, now if you put a little, hide a little message to the kids in there, now what they're going to do is John's going to watch it. Then he's going to send it to his wife and watch it again with her. And then they're going to call little Zoe and they're going to watch it a third time showing Zoe the little message that you had for her. Right. And so that's a lot of mileage out of like a 30 second selfie video that you're going to do. And it creates that personal connection. Right. And now the way to a parent's heart is through their kids. Right. So uh, so that's just a great way to connect with people and kind of get them back. Right. If that's their first touch after they came 24 hours later and you send that on Monday morning and then you plug them into an extended 12 week follow up system uh, using something like text and church is, is my favorite tool for that. Uh, right now, you're just continuing to, uh, to stay in touch with them and invite them back to church. We, we, we had a, a girl here. Uh, not too long ago, who uh, she came out and, uh, and went through planner visit, not with Katie, but with a different host. And then uh, we, we set up all of our stuff through text and church. And uh, so she kept getting like the text and emails from Katie in this in, in this 12 week follow up system that we'd set up. And I remember she came back like it'd been like six weeks and she, came up, she was like, oh, my gosh, Katie. And I like, came up and like gave her a hug. She's like, thank you so much for texting me and staying in touch. You kept inviting me out. Things have been crazy. Like I was out of town and then like this happened and then I had this and, and it was crazy. But like you didn't give up. You kept inviting me and I'm here. I know it's like a month and a half, but thank you so much. And I love guts. I love you. Uh, man, this is my church. Right. And like and it's funny because I was, I was standing next to Katie in the lobby when, when that happened and the girl walked away and I was like, hey, who's that? She's like, I have no idea. Like she's just getting the text and church follow up system. But I signed all of them, Katie. Right. So she thought Katie was sending these personalized text messages, which she was. Katie wrote all of them personally, but we used an automated follow up system in order to just keep sending that every uh, every single week. So um, that's the power of follow up. And when you do that, right, you can get first time visitors. You can turn them into second time visitors, into third time visitors and eventually get them into your next steps uh, and get them plugged into your church. But you need a follow system to do that. I love it. So there you go, guys, the four steps of this framework. Each step has some really important ingredients. You got the targeted Facebook ad, the landing page, the plan your visit system kind of nestled in there at three, and then that follow-up system. Uh, Chris, I absolutely love all that. I know there's gonna be some pastors, church leaders on here like, man, that is a lot. And we would be the first to tell you, absolutely 100%. And we are the first to raise our hand and say, we're obsessed with this stuff. Like when you talk about reaching new people, like we're obsessed with that. And honestly, uh, we want to find churches and pastors that are obsessed as equally as we are about your community. So if you're like, ah, you know, this sounds interesting, but we're not really like, that sounds like a lot of work. Like, yeah, it's good. I wouldn't try it. But for the pastor who's like, you know what? I wake up every morning thinking, how are we going to get the good news out to more people? I would cancel every meeting and every program if it meant we could focus on hosting new people well. I'm just, my not only am I obsessed with this, but my entire team is obsessed with this. And we've got to figure that out. Like, you are the church we want to work with. Okay, so if you are as equally obsessed as we are, 
hey, fist <laughs> bump, because you've just found your uh, your family, and you are going to absolutely love both Church Marketing University and Grow. And uh, yeah, so so yes, you're you, you're right. It is it is a little bit of an obsession, but it's a it's a kingdom obsession. So, uh, and I, I can tell you, like our team is just nuts about this. This is literally what we spend day and evening thinking about, dreaming about, praying about, testing with churches. Uh, I can tell you, like. Even after like work hours, we're just like, oh man, I just had this idea, and it gets a little crazy sometimes. But man, we are we are nuts about it because we want to help churches, local churches, who are equally as crazy about reaching people. We want to help you reach those those people. So uh, again, just just a reminder uh, for those who are interested, the Grow Plan Your Visit Bootcamp is coming up. And you can comment the word grow in the comments below. Uh, I want to show you kind of some of the, we will message you three different links. Uh, one of them will have a little bit more information about the, about the program. It's this, and it looks like two of you guys have already jumped in. So we do have eight spots remaining. Uh, so as long as there's spots remaining, uh, you can jump in and, and secure a spot and uh, get going there. When those spots are gone, there will be a wait list. So you will be able to jump on a wait list. So maybe you're watching this on-demand uh, webinar on YouTube and you're like, oh no, we're on a wait list. Hey, sign up for the wait list. We're going to offer one more time where we have it at the price point that we have it at. And then I, right now it's at $297 a month for Grow. And I'll explain what you get here in a second. The next time we offer it, it's either gonna be at 347 or 397. Uh, just because of the cost, everybody knows the whole inflation deal and what we're including is is ridiculous and I'll show you that here in a second but there is one more opportunity we're gonna we're gonna offer it at this uh, uh, price point and so you want to get on the wait list if you miss these eight spots so that you don't miss the next go round because and if you're already in grow you will lock in that rate so when you see us uh, raise it up to 397 my guess is neck the year after that it'll be closer to 497 um, but you will lock in your rate so you don't have to worry about that if you're currently in the grow program just to be clear, this is the order form that you are looking for. This is the monthly order form. If you wanna save a, a few extra dollars, you can switch over to the annual order form. Uh, we'll save you a few extra dollars. Again, if you're talking about through a, like a finance committee, uh, pitch this to them like, hey, you know that budget, we've got about $4,000 in the line item to send out a direct mail piece. Say, what if we invested it in the GROW program and it'd be like sending out a direct mail piece every single day uh, for the entire year. So if you've got something like that, uh, it, that's an easy way to pitch it to a board or a finance team. It's like, hey, you know that line item we have for fill in the blank? What if we use that for this program? I think we could reach more people and reach them all year round. Uh, I, I, so for those who are used to investing in missions, local missions grow is like sending out a missionary, right? It's going to take some time. It's, it is investment, but over time, uh, you will see a, a return on that investment. So we do have the annual order form, if that would make it easier. If you've got like a line item, hey, instead of doing this, we're going to do this grow program for the next year, you can do that. But for a lot of churches, you can jump in the monthly opportunity and that's going to include all of the following so it's got all of our boot camps uh, that we're talking about our next one is the plan your visit boot camp it's the entire growth system all of Chris's prayer ads uh, the discover your purpose uh, ads as well will hook you that up in year two of your grow uh, approach once you've completed every step of year one we'll hook you up with the the discover your purpose ads those ad campaigns in and of themselves Chris uh, you, w before we combined was selling those anywhere from five thousand to seventy five hundred dollars just for those systems but that's included in grow we have weekly coaching calls that's the discover your purpose campaign for year two of grow once you've completed all the steps from year one the Google grant management that's where we will help you secure a grant from Google to get ten thousand dollars of ad credit every single uh, month so over a year that's one hundred twenty thousand dollars and then the CMU team sets up those ads run those ads for people in transportation distance of your church around your church and that's what we're trying to do is get people who are looking for things that your church offers to your website so that your brand new plan of visit system can convert them from website visitors to in-person visitors so that becomes your traffic source 
the longer we work with you and grow, the more of that $10,000 that we can spend, the more uh, people locally we can get onto your website, the more in-person visitors that we can get you. We do have a snowball system. It does take us about three or four months to really get that snowball going. But again, think of it like sending out a foreign missionary. Uh, the longer you invest, the more uh, you know time that they have in a, in a country, the more opportunity you have to develop relationships and build momentum. It, it works like that. Um, also, your CMU enrollment is included in that. Your Omega, so your church website. So for, for some of you who already are enrolled in Omega and CMU, you will get a rebate of Grow. So right now, Grow is $297 a month. If you're already saying, hey, I'm paying $97 a month for Omega and I'm paying $97 a month for CMU, your max for Grow for all of that will be $297. So that includes Omega, that includes CMU, that includes your daily social media guides, that includes the Google Grant management that includes so if you're already paying for some of these ingredients grow is a way to bundle everything together and uh, and have it in one package again similar to sending out one direct mail piece a year but I'm telling you the results are not even in the same ballpark that you will get like to be able to spend hundred twenty thousand dollars a year in, in Google's money to be able to run the the prayer um, ads to be able to get a website in that that's highly effective to get all of our templates CMU all that so it is it is a ridiculous uh, return on the investment it, right now at the low price so that's that's the grow pitch once you enroll or if you're currently enrolled what you need to do is log in Go to the bootcamp section of the dashboard and then click on register now uh, in order to RSVP for the bootcamp. Okay, so that's how you RSVP. So if you enroll here in the next couple hours, uh, as long as those spots are available, log into your new dashboard, click register now, and that will get you and your team. You can also add up to team to 10 team members in your um, your dashboard essentially on your on your team so you can add in team members who want to come maybe you have a hospitality team member uh, maybe you have you know lead pastor pastor's uh, daughter that's going to be helping your hospitality volunteer uh, your follow-up person you can add all of them you can all get them access and then they can get access to the parts of the program that they need so there you go if you want more information you can comment grow uh, that'll get you a link to the grow page and the grow order form uh, and that'll that'll show up in your messenger inbox so thank you so much for whoever's helping me down here in the comments i do want to bring chris back on and i want to answer your questions so for those who are still here live if you have a question for chris or a question that i can help you out with uh, please go ahead and even if you put it in the comments please put it in the comments again uh, we've got about 10 minutes here for q a so i will try as fast as i can to get chris to go rapid fire he normally has no problem with that uh, but we will answer as many questions as we possibly can and again yes thank you uh, chris if you want information there about grow you can comment grow for those on youtube watching the on-demand webinar there will be a link over to the grow page where you can get more information or jump on the wait list if those spots uh, are gone so it is going to be such a good um so a good boot camp. Uh, Annette saying, I can't wait for more campaigns, ad campaigns. I know, like, and I was just looking at the schedule. Um, and I'm going to bring Chris back on here. I was just looking at the grow schedule. And man, it's cool to see the yearly plan come together. Um, and I was just mapping it out uh, for the year. We've got the plan to visit boot camp coming up. Then we've got a follow up boot camp we're doing with our friends at Texan Church. Then we've got our big fall. Um, uh, workshop that we're doing, kind of putting your marketing system in place. Then we've got the um, church website boot camp coming up. After that, we've got the Easter ads boot camp. Then we've got the new beginning kit for January. No, I, I missed one. Christmas ads boot camp. Then the new beginnings kit. Then the then the witness kit. Then the Easter ads boot camp. Then the Mother's Day kit. And then we'll be back to the uh, the prayer ads uh, boot camp. So it's really cool to be like to step back and look at a calendar year uh, for CMU and grow churches and be like, oh my gosh, like um, back in 2020, Chris, we did that conference where we were helping churches put together an annual marketing plan. And we had yeah. some really good ideas. That was a great conference. But now more so than ever, I'm so pumped about how we can help a church year round uh, reach a ton of people. And uh, it's it's cool to see, uh, you know, what all God is doing. And I'm telling you, like the, the testimonies we're starting to get back are, are just incredible. So 
Um, all right, Chris, any, was there anything there about grow that I've missed? Again, we got a couple minutes left. So if you want to put in your, your question in the comments, you can, uh, and we'll, we'll hang on here till about 2 15 PM local time. So, uh, Chris, anything else you throw out there with, uh, about grow? No, you know, I, I would say the, the, the biggest thing about grow is it, it's, it's like having a church growth team on staff with you. Right. Like literally like you don't have to be worrying about uh, Facebook's new algorithm changes or what type of ads are working or how to use chatbots or how to create landing pages that convert on your website. Right. Or how the heck to get Google's ten thousand dollars a month and free Google ad money and then how to set up ad campaigns and send all of that to your website. You don't have to worry about all that because we do it for you. Right. Like we're going to worry about all of that for you. We'll keep you ahead of the trends. Right. We'll keep you out in front. And so like you can just kind of check that off your mental checklist of like, hey, we're on staff keeping up with all the algorithm changes, what's working now and all that kind of stuff. And then we just roll it out to you and we roll it out to you in literally like copy and paste plug and play templates, right? So like the, the churches that went through the prayer ads, we took something really, really complicated and we made it the easiest, simplest thing because instead of going in and having to custom build and custom code chatbots from the ground up, all you do is click one button and it imported the entire uh, automated sequences, chatbots, growth tools, everything into your account because we built it that way, right? So that's that's what's what's really cool is, you know, we've, we've got churches uh, in there, like some of the things, you know, even the just the prayer ads alone, which we didn't even get a chance to, to talk about today because we've we're covering so much ground, but, you know, helped a, a church of 15 grow to 50 in two months, had a, a church of 60 grow to 110 in three months, uh, had a, a, an ARC church plant was stuck at 130. They went from 130 to 200 in three months and actually grew their church over the summer and then have the largest... Uh, membership classes of churches actually joining the church in July and August, uh, right? And I mean, we, we saw a, a church of 20 people who had 209 plan your visits in only five months um, using the, the the strategies and stuff that we actually teach inside the Grow program. So, um, man, if if that's you, if you're at all on the uh, on the fence, I just urge you to pray about it, right? And just and just ask the Lord if it's something that you should be you should be a part of, right? And then if you decide to do it come into this, not with a marketing mindset, but with a ministry mindset, right? You have to come into this just saying, okay, I'm willing. I mean, I understand that there are people on the other side of my faithfulness. I'm going to go all in and just become obsessed with people and with ministry, right? And then we're going to show you some ways to use social media and technology to reach more people. And the more people you reach, right, some of them are going to end up uh, coming to church and you're going to achieve that healthy, sustainable church growth. Right. But this is not a quick fix. It's not a silver bullet. Right. It's, it's, it's not going to, you know, two weeks and you double your church, right. You need to come into this, just saying, okay, I'm all in for at least the next 12 months. I'm going pedal to the floor. I'm going to do everything that Ryan and Chris and the team tells me to do. Uh, right. And, and so no matter what it is, I'm all in for 12 months and then you can reevaluate. Right. So, uh, but like Ryan said, if you're at all cash strapped, you're like, man, there's no way I commit to 12 months. And uh, just stay in, you know, if you're not in CMU, get in CMU, go through foundations, do some of those things. And then as the church begins to grow, then maybe you can actually jump into grow. Uh, but for those of you guys who are ready to just go all in, uh, man, pedal to the floor and, and just get after it, man, I, I, I would uh, seriously consider, uh, you know, uh, joining grow and just just pray about it. Ask the Lord if it's something you should be a part of. Uh, we'd, we'd love to be a part of your team. Love it. Uh, questions coming in. So we'll fill these as fast as possible. Uh, Mike Santa Stevens, what's up? Pastor Mike, um, good to hear from you. Uh, how often is it recommended to do the plan your visit Facebook ad? Is it possible to do too often? So uh, Mike, I'll throw my answer out there and then kick it over to Chris. Again, we'll try to rapid fire here. Obviously there's a much longer, more nuanced answer on this. I think if I was lead pastoring a church, I would I would basically start with a goal of how many, how many visiting families do we want every single week? Uh, how many plan your visits do we want every single week? And then in my lead team meeting, I would be looking at how many families did we get this week? How many visitors do we have? How many plan your visits do we have? And then I would be setting up my system to accomplish the objectives that we're trying, trying to hit. So for me, I think it would be smart where you would have a some sort of selfie invite video year round happening, even if it's like, man, we're gonna spend a dollar a day just to always be inviting people to our church. I think that's super smart. Now, one of the things that we do with Grow is we get the Google grant going, so we're using Google's money year round to send you traffic. What's great about that is 
even when you feel like, man, we don't have the budget right now to invest in Facebook ads, or maybe we don't have a, a, a team right now that we could do the, the prayer ads, or maybe I'm, I'm gonna be out of the office as a lead pastor, the CMU team isn't gonna stop. We're gonna be still be running that traffic. So that's what's great about Grow, is you've got the, the Google ads that's gonna be running year round. I would have a, even if it's a low dollar evergreen uh, Facebook ad out there year round. And then I do wanna show this, um, I, I want to show you this email because this is the first time and, and for our grow churches we're going to be having a vision um, experience coming up here uh, where we kind of walk through this plan but this is like our our annual plan here and and Mike every every month there's a new opportunity right so in December we're going to we're going to show you the ads you should be running uh, for Christmas. In March, we're going to show you your Easter ads. In May, we're going to show you the ads that you need to be running for Mother's Day. Those 3 days specifically are a great opportunity to double your church attendance. And then you need to at a certain point in the year, I recommend all our grow churches doing two 30 for 30 uh, prayer ads uh, challenges where you're trying to pray for as many people in your area as possible in 30 days, trying to get to a, a, a thousand people prayed for in your community. So like I can walk through all this, it's a lot, but that, so in some senses, you could be running ads all year round, specifically with like the Google grant and some Facebook ads. But then there, there are going to be seasons and windows where you want to run a specific uh, type of campaign so that you're maximizing that, that window. Christmas, Easter, January. January is a great time to run the Discover Your Purpose. Uh, prayer ads are you know, great anytime you want to add them in there. So um, we've, got a, we've got a plan that we're we're going to be rolling out at a vision experience for all our go churches that kind of lay that out but that would be my thought is uh you know i think you should i think every pastor should ask the question how are we going to do local missions every single day in our in our community um and then answer that question first and then everything else is a strategy question is that going to be a facebook ad is it going to be a google ad uh, but but yeah if i was lead pastoring I would be answering that question. What's our local missions uh, strategy uh, uh, daily? So, Chris, anything that you would add on that, or am I totally wrong? Yeah, no, I mean, I, I think I think you nailed it, man. I, I I'm I'm a huge fan. Like when I was on staff at the church, I was literally uh, running at least one plan your visit Facebook ad at all times. Sometimes I'd have multiple going, um, and I would never turn one off until I turned the next one on. Uh, right. So I, I would let them overlap just because I never wanted there to be any time where we weren't inviting people to church and inviting them out to plan a visit. So, um, you know, and, and I like what you said, Ryan, like when, when you reverse engineer the result that you want, you can actually like you can learn your numbers really, really quick and, and you can adjust your budget up and down in order to, to to be able to reverse engineer how many families you want coming up. So, for example, um, I remember a, a while ago when I was running Facebook ads for about, I think it was 27 different churches that I was running Facebook ads for. And I calculated the numbers and I found out that out of those 27 churches, um, the, uh, the, the, the average uh, for a plan your visit in the country was $51, right? So, uh, so I found out, out, of, out, of all those, uh, out of all those 27 churches, on average, for every $51 in ad spend, they would get a plan your visit. Right, so let's. So if we just use that average number, you might come in and just say, okay, well, we want five new families, five new plan your visit families every single week. Okay, great. Right, well then you know that you're gonna have to spend about two hundred and fifty dollars a week in Facebook ads in order to do that. Right, so you would budget a thousand dollars a month for plan your visit Facebook ads. Uh, right, and so you might say, oh, dude, Apple, there's no way we have a thousand dollars. Okay, great. Right, then 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 adjust that. But even if you're using that number, right, of fifty one dollars, right. Uh, just it, it's a great way just to to kind of try to reverse engineer some of those numbers, right? So, but the good thing is you would know, okay, if we spend a thousand dollars on Facebook ads and we do this like Ryan and Chris said to do it, right? And you're in CMU and just just using that framework, then you know for every thousand dollars that you spend on Facebook, right, every single month, you would reverse engineer about twenty new plan your visit families, right? So maybe you're like, man, I've only got five hundred bucks a month to spend. Okay, great. So you're probably going to get two to three families per week, right? You're going to have about ten new families every single month, right? And you can uh, you can raise or lower the uh, the budget on this. So I actually I had a church uh, one time on the East Coast that was like, okay, and I, I talked to them about this thirty for thirty. I was like, hey, let's just spend thirty dollars a day for the first thirty days, right? We're going to spend nine hundred dollars on Facebook ads, but after that, we're going to know our numbers and we'll know exactly how much money you have to spend on Facebook in order to get a plan your visit family. Then we can raise or lower the budget 
based on those numbers, right? I remember they're like, fine, okay, we're, we're gonna pull the money out of say, we'll move it from from our, our missions budget or our outreach budget or something, right? We don't, we, you know, who, who has a Facebook ads budget, right? So they had to pull it from somewhere else. Said, but we could only do it for a month. There's no way we could spend, you know, 900, almost a thousand dollars a month on Facebook ads. So yeah, great. Like just let's, let's do it for 30 days, see what happens. At the end of 30 days, they had so many plan your visits, like 50 or 60 plan your visits. They're like double the budget, double the budget. Like I don't remember if they took up a special offering, if they moved the money, somehow they figured out the money. Imagine that they figured it out and they went from 30 day to 60 a day because they couldn't believe how many new visitors started pouring in the front door from these plan your visit ads. Right. So we just, we just kept ads going for them. Uh, like and I think, I think we went for 10 or 11 months straight without changing the ads. Or, or just changing the ads once a month, but always having a plan your visit ad run. And in those 10 or 11 months, that church ended up having 650 plan your visits, right? So, um, you know, the, the the best thing to do, I think, is to always have uh, a plan your visit Facebook ad going, inviting people to church, and you can reverse engineer your numbers, and you might find the same thing. You might find that, hey, once you start doing this, this is the single most important thing you're doing in order to reach new families, get the word out about your church, uh, and, and, and actually attract new visitors. And so if that's the case, then I'm sure you could take up a special offering or you could find the money somewhere if it was working and bringing in new people every single Sunday. Yep. Love it. All right, <clears throat> Chris, let's keep going forward. Uh, Dan was asking, does your program work? I think I kind of clarified this effectively in Canada. So we do have quite a few Can Canadian churches uh, in Grow. We love our... Uh, uh, as we call them in the soccer culture, Canada, America's hat, uh, you folks up there in, in the north. Uh, in fact, I wanted to show you guys, you might have seen my screen here. Uh, this is Pioneer Church. So this is Pastor Mike Paquette. It's been cool to go on this journey with him uh, and his wife, Cheryl Ann. Uh, so to see them, and they just jumped into this uh, church, you know, in I think they're maybe about a year in. So that's uh, Pastor Mike there. But he started out and he started at our church website boot camp. And so we got him a new a new website, which has been a huge improvement. Cheryl Ann is the one that that uh, really updates and runs the website now, and she's loving it. Um, it's pretty cool to see her taking ownership of that. We got the te Texan Church playing your visit on here. Uh, Pastor Mike is doing uh, selfie videos uh, on here, so like he's he's being stretched. There you see him doing that. Uh, going into Easter, he got, jumped into the Easter Ads boot camp. I want to say they had uh, maybe four plan your visits uh, going into Easter. So they were just kind of getting started, uh, tiptoeing on that. And then for after Easter, he jumped into the prayer ads uh, boot camp. Chris, is there any way? Um, I know Pastor Mike, I think, has been running prayer ads now for maybe a week or two weeks. Uh, can you look and see if we can see his stats, uh, what they're doing? Pioneer Church up in uh, Norland, Norland, Norland. So um, anyway, so all that to say is, uh, yes, for those churches who uh, want to reach people, are committed, um, and, and again, don't, don't hear me saying that this is some sort of silver bullet. It's not. It takes a lot of hard work. It takes dedication. Uh, it's really based on this philosophy of ministry flows out of relationships. Relationships take time. That's why we keep using the missionary uh, example is because it's like sending out a missionary. And the question would be, well, does missions work in Canada? Or does missions work in Egypt? Or does missions? Yes. It just ministry flows out of relationships. Relationships take time. And it's going to take an investment. But yes, wherever you're going to send a missionary, if you, uh, you know, do those things to develop relationships, uh, you know, and, and you follow the Bible and biblical principles and you do ministry uh, first marketing that we, we weave in there, uh, you're going to have results. It may take a little bit more time depending where you're at. Sure. Um, every church we work with says we're in a unique situation. The ground is hard here. <laughs> We've heard all of that. And uh, the good news is uh, the good news about the good news is that it 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 won't return void. And so when you have a program that's based on the good news, that's doing the right things over and over again, that's simply using tools to, to really develop those relationships, it's going to work. It just depends on the church, you know, committing to the long-term results of it. So, uh, Chris, any way we can see the Pioneer Church, what they've done? Over, I think they've been running it for like a week or two weeks since the Prayer Ads Boot Camp. Yeah, so let me, uh, let me show how uh... I think this is it right here. Yeah. Uh, all right. Can you guys see my screen? Okay, bro. Not yet. Let me let me throw it uh, up here on the screen. Hold on. All right. Here we go. Okay. Oh, cool. You have a you have a 
I didn't even see this yet. Yeah, yeah. So here's here's what's cool is so you know like Mike, you can see like April thirteenth. Hey, we just got our second planner visit. All right, thanks to Ryan for helping us out so much. He's going above and beyond setting up our Facebook ads. Right, so we had that, and then you can see here uh, exactly one month later, May thirteenth. It said. Um, Hey y'all, uh, if you're wondering if prayer ads work, they do. Our church is in rural Ontario, Canada. Uh, we just did the prayer ads boot camp. So far we've had 16 prayer requests and what I call five tentatively planned visits. Uh, if this works where I am, it'll work anywhere because Canada is spiritually darker than the US. Right, it says, plus I just got off the phone with a lady who commented on the Facebook prayer ad, uh, says she's going through a rough time. Um, so through many chat and Facebook messenger, I reached out with an audio prayer and with a prayer written uh, and sent through messenger. The lady responds uh, that she might come to church, not this weekend, but next, and asked me to call her. Uh, we talked and she wants to know uh, how I knew she was going through a storm and said she's angry at God, so she's proud of herself, right? So you can see all these different things that, that he's going through and this lady that's having, but he's having this ministry conversation on Facebook. So we talk about this isn't marketing, this is ministry, right? So you see, he, he did the, the 30 for 30, right? $30 a day for 30 days. Uh, on the prayer ads, he said, uh, right? And so, uh, but pretty pretty cool deal, right? So uh, Pastor Mike has has been absolutely crushing it. And uh, and this is this has been really, really cool. Um, you know, and, and that's, uh, but but it's all because, uh, oh, there we go. Um, it, it's all because he just went all in, right? Running plan your business Facebook ads, running uh, prayer ads, right? But he's, he's in a, a spiritually dark place like Canada and it's still working for him, so. Uh, yeah, he's, he's doing awesome. Although I would, I would challenge. I mean, I get what Pastor Mike's saying as far as Canada being more spiritually dark, but to me, every Canadian person I meet seems to have more fruit of the spirit than us Americans. I'm just going to throw that out there. I don't know what that means. Uh, I just would, I would just would throw that out there. You guys are, I, I feel like in so many more ways, like, yeah, ahead of us, so to speak. So, um, good, good question though. Okay. Um, next question. When starting with a first time visitor, is there a sweet spot that is, uh, the most comfortable towards the front in the middle towards the back? So I think this is the question, uh, Jeanette has for maybe saving a seat. Um, if you have, okay. a, if you have a first time vid visitor, Chris, and you're saving them a seat, the host, you throw them all the way up front, you put them in the middle, put them in the back. Where are you putting them? Yeah. So I, I, you know, I mean, this is kind of personal preference for me. I always go kind of uh, front middle, uh, right? So like, I don't want them all the way in the back. The closer you are to the front, the easier it's, uh, it is to like engage and stay, stay engaged and kind of just experience the service in, in, in my, uh, in my opinion. But if you throw them all the way in the front, it's super awkward and they feel like everyone's staring at the back of them and that kind of stuff. Right. So, uh, you know, depending on the size of your church, right. Maybe like rows, like five or six or something like that. Right. If you got like 20 or 30 rows, you got like, you know, uh, row five or six. So you're towards the middle, but there's a couple of rows between them and the stage. Uh, but they're close enough that they can be engaged, right? So uh, I, I would say the sweet spot is not the front, not the middle, but somewhere right in between, right? We'll call it the, the front middle, the friddle. That's where I would, that's where I would right I love there it. in the friddle. I love it, right in the friddle. Um, Jeremy's asking, are you sending your selfie videos from your personal phone or are you using something else? So yeah, Jeremy, the, the follow-up thing that he described, Chris described, that's from a personal phone. I know some churches will actually get like an iPhone that they just use for that. Um, so I've heard Chris talk a lot about that. I do know also, I don't want to spoil the surprise, but text in church is about to come out with something. Um, there's some big news all the way around between CMU grow text and church, some of the, uh, some other things. So there are some ways maybe that that is coming soon, but Chris, that's a personal, either a personal phone or like some, some phone that's got hooked up with an iCloud account. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So I, I used to send them just from my personal phone, right? So people could text me back. We could have a conversation. I know not everybody wants to give out their phone number, and so uh, I've had tons of churches. What they'll do is they'll just go, you know, to the to uh, to the the phone store or whatever, right? And just get like an older model, like iPhone, right? Because usually, like the current model costs money, but usually, like the old model, like they'll give you for free. And so you can go get like one of those like free iPhones, or even just activate an old iPhone that you might have laying around the house. And usually you can add it to like your plan for like 10 bucks a month, right? So the church just pays an extra 10 bucks a month. And now you've got a phone that you can send out all of your selfie videos from, uh, you know, any other type of like texting and that kind of stuff you want to send where you don't want to use your number. You can just use that phone from now on and it's like 10 bucks a month. Love it. Andrew's asking, uh, sounds like a great plan. I already know our church's main objection. So he's, he's voicing what his church's or I'm assuming like kind of leadership's objections going to be. That's a lot of volunteers. Um, we to have a personal host for each visitor 
any tips for addressing that challenge? Um, Chris, yeah. uh, using the kindness of the Lord, how would you, <laughs> how would you address not Andrew? Andrew, I think is like probably in our camp, right? Is like, man, this yeah. is yeah. what better thing could we be doing? But how would you kindly talk to maybe Andrew's board or leadership? So Andrew, I like, I actually used to think the exact same thing. Okay. So I was just like your board. Like I, I thought like, oh my gosh, it's going to take forever to like, you know, train up an entire team and all that kind of stuff. Right. But, uh, but here's what I found. If you just find friendly people, they naturally know what to do. Right. So all you have to do is just find, like, we call them like your people, people at right? the type of people that are friendly. They always smile. They've never met a stranger. So you don't have to like train those people up and stuff. Uh, you can go out and just, and just find your people, people. And here's the deal is it's not like it's an avalanche of people coming through the door every single week. Right. Like, like it, it's probably well, most churches probably have like one or two plan your visits per week. Right. Some weeks it'll be one. Some weeks it'll be two. The next week it'll be zero. Right. Like it's it's not a lot. So having one or two people on the plan your visit team, right, one or two friendly people that can host people is nothing crazy. Even if it, it explodes and you have five, uh, you know, uh, plan your visits every single week. Right. You decide to go all in. You're spending a thousand bucks a month and you're getting five plan your visits every single week. It's easy to five to find five friendly people every single week that are willing to just host someone, right? Again, if they're friendly and stuff, they enjoy that kind of stuff. Like, I didn't need to be trained. I love taking care of new people, right? So, like, hey, Abo, can you show the Smith family around? I'm like, yeah, what's up, guys? Right? Like, you don't you don't have to coach me. You don't have to tell me. Like, I, you know, and 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 I know I know you know at, at least thirty people like in my church that are like that, right? So, uh, depending on the size of your church, right, you might have fewer people, but I guarantee. You've got three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten people in your church who are friendly enough to be this. It doesn't require a lot of training. And you're really only talking, right, one, two, maybe three per week when you're doing this. And even if you go all in, you're talking five or six max. So it, it's not going to take nearly as many people. I, I thought the same thing when I first started out. But what we actually found was it was really only, uh, you know, a couple of people every single week. And it was super easy. We just got our people people and they knew exactly what to do. Our people people. <laughs> I love that. And if, again, I, sometimes I like to put my uh, metaphorical lead pastor hat on. And part of my thinking would be if I was processing. So, Andrew, if I was your lead pastor and you came to me with this idea, part of my processing would be, man, this is the this is the type of church I want to lead. This is the type of culture I want to be a pastor at where people are welcoming and introducing them around and hosting them. And so I'm going to think to myself, what better thing than we could do to involve as many uh, people and families as possible than in this process? Because I want my entire church to feel like how Chris Abbott describes a host. So my brain, I'm not thinking like, how are you, how in the world are we going to get three or five people? I'm thinking, how in the world could I get my entire church to do this? To, to essentially everybody who calls Belief Church their, their church home, they look at themselves like a host. Like that's what we're trying to do. So I'm, I'm kind of going to flip it on its head and be like, how are we doing? Now I know everybody's not people, people. Everybody's got their sweet spot. But I, that's the type of church I, I want to lead. And so that's that would be where my brain goes. But again, like I, the big disclaimer is like Chris and, and our team and, and myself, like we're just obsessed with this. So when you ask us this question, we're like, what better thing could you be doing? You know, like what, you know, like this is what we're here for, right? So like we're just, we can come across a little bit um, jaded if we're not careful. So that's why I was like, <laughs> Chris, in all love. Uh, what, would you, what would you say? Okay, two final questions, guys, and then we'll let you get back um, to to your day. But Oscar's asking, do you have the the Spanish version of your programs? Oscar, not not really, not quite yet. It's something that we're um, it is on in our mind. We are trying to to solve that. We do have some Spanish speaking churches that are doing the translation of our ads uh, in Google. It is a little bit more of a bigger commitment. We do have some of our kits that some of our Spanish uh, churches have translated. And then we have a shared Dropbox where they're putting those materials back. There are some of our like bumpers and some of our kit materials that have been translated. But I would be lying to you if I said, yep, yeah, we have it. And then you get in there and you're like, no, you don't, Ryan. You lied to me. Um, so it is something that we would love to be able to pull off one day. We are not 100% there yet. But we would love to be, um, yeah, to, to, to move in that direction. But so, but not, not yet. The tru truthful answer is not yet. Um, okay. One, there were f one final question I was going to grab here. Oh, so Jeanette, we'll end on this question. And Chris, you and I, you and I may disagree on, on this one and not specifically 
Okay. Not specifically this question, but I think Jeanette's question opens a uh, can. And maybe maybe we'll do another webinar uh, Jean on Jeanette's question. But Jeanette's asked, what about using Amazon Ring neighborhood to reach people very local to your church? So I'll go first, Chris, and then I'll, I'll give you the, the parting shot, and then we'll, we'll go about uh, our day here. But my – so there's always going to be questions about should we use this? Should we use that? What about – you know, what about TikTok? What about the latest, greatest? What about this idea? What about next door? What about this? And so I love all those things. And my natural bent is towards innovating, trying new things. I love to try new things. But the longer I'm in kind of helping churches reach people, the more I'm fascinated at the power of boring. A lot of times we're chasing the latest and greatest. And it's like, oh, if we could just be on TikTok, that's going to blow up. And you spend some time there. But at the end of the day or at the end of the decade, man, it really didn't move the needle. And honestly, I'm just focused on some of the boring things that we know moves the needle every single week. So can Amazon ring neighborhood work? Could next door work? Could TikTok work? Could probably yes. Are there things that if you just get into a program like Grow, uh, that, hey, maybe not as super, you know, latest shiny object, but will get you visitors every single week? Absolutely. And so part of the balance of being a leader pastor is like, when is it smart to go chase the latest, greatest thing? And when is it like, what are we trying to do? Sometimes I feel like the we're trying to just like do this thing because it's the latest and greatest. But I would go back to almost that conversation is like, what's our objective? Okay, our objective is we want to have five visiting families every single week. Then ask the question, what's the best way to meet that objective? And as opposed to, oh, that's a new thing. Maybe we should be on it. So I would, I would start with my goal. I would start measuring the goal. And then I would start introducing the things that would help me achieve the goal. And I would probably focus on the most boring things first. Your website, plan a visit, prayer ads. Facebook ads, um, search engine optimization, uh, and that's where I would start. And then if I still needed some other ideas, then I would start to entertain some more innovative things. So, Chris, I think you're more on the innovative edge than I am. I'm getting old and grumpy. <laughs> uh, what What would you advise Jeanette here? Uh, yeah, I mean, so I'm, I'm, I'm actually similar to you, Ryan. Like I... I think when you have things that are that are proven to work that you know work, right? Like, um, like if you want to try new things, I'm okay with trying things if you're already doing the things that work, right? Mm -hmm. But like, so if you're not already running Facebook ads and having tons of new families, right? If you don't have a steady stream of new visitors coming in every single Sunday from Facebook, we literally just spent the last hour and a half laying out for you the exact framework for how to do that. Right. And then, and then, but if you want to go like look at another platform that's like unproven, right. So even you know, like, like ring, like I, I think it's more like neighborhood watch and, and kind of connecting with neighbors and that kind of stuff. Right. So if you're on there, like inviting people to church, that could, that could be kind of tone deaf for what the platform is for. Right. And that, that could be you know a, a little bit weird. Same thing with like next door or any of those types of platforms. So um, the only way I would ever go exploring other platforms is if you're already using the ones that are proven to work. Right. So if, if you've got new people, you know, coming from Facebook and Instagram every single week already and you want to add to that, uh, you know, and throw gasoline in the bonfire, by all means, go try Twitter ads or TikTok or Nextdoor or, or Ring or, you know, Spotify. I don't know. You know, there's but, you know, go go try that kind of stuff. But if you don't, then I'm not sure why you wouldn't just use a proven framework that's working at thousands of churches all over uh, you know, the, the, the U S and Canada, basically all five English speaking, like I've literally, I've personally run this and seen this work over and over and over in the U S Canada, England, New Zealand, and Australia, right. The, the big five English speaking, uh, countries. And I've seen this work at, uh, at tons of African churches as well. So, um, yeah, I, I would I would master that first, and then I would start looking at some of the other uh, platforms that you might be able to diversify uh, your your traffic from. Love it, 
Love it. Uh, we are uh, providing a replay over on YouTube. So if you comment the word grow, uh, you'll get a link. Um, it won't have this replay live yet, or you could go to Chris Abbott's YouTube channel, uh, subscribe over there. You should already be subscribed over there anyway. Somebody put a link in the chat uh, to Chris Abbott's YouTube channel, and uh, we'll get you a link. That's where we're going to put up the webinar on demand, which is this information. Cut down a little bit more of a YouTube-friendly channel. Uh, way there and i i do like jeremy mentioned gives a shout out to the foundations course which if you if you haven't done that yet you can put scholarship in the chat and get into cmu that's a great next step uh, i don't i can't tell you how many pastors i talk with and, and jeanette we're, we're kind of using yours as a springboard to answer other questions but we talk with pastors all the time that are trying all sorts of things and most of them are frustrated that they're not getting results. And so in our foundations course, what Jeremy's mentioning is what I see uh, all the time is, is churches trying to build a marketing strategy without the foundation in place. And what we say in this is like building without a foundation is only going to lead to frustration. So there's some very key things. There's eight big uh, foundational elements you got to have in place. Once you get those in place, everything that you do becomes what I say twice as effective at half the cost. And if you are trying, it's kind of like, hey, we keep trying to put up the walls in a, in a roof, but it keeps falling over. It's like, yeah, you need a you need a foundation. Like, let's get that. So, uh, Jeremy, thank you for the reminder on that. Um, be, yeah, as you want to try new things, just make sure you have a foundation that's solid that you're that you're building off of. If not, you'll just you'll just it'll be frustrating. So, all right, guys. Hopefully, this has been helpful. Love hanging out with you guys. You guys are, are the best. Chris, this has been a blast. Um, yeah. Let's let's do it again uh, sometime. Maybe we can do the, a whole webinar on the kind of that idea of what ideas, what innovative things should I be trying. That that'd be fun. Let's do uh, it. And uh, yeah, let's do it again, guys. Keep up the good work, and we'll see you next time. God bless. See y'all.